My next guest takes on Andre Ewell coming up here at UFC 232 on December 29th. It is the prospect, Nathaniel Wood, joining me here on the program for the very first time. Nathaniel, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, mate. Training's going good. You know, I'm feeling great, and uh, I'm just ready to rock on the uh, 29th. Yeah, and uh, how was today? How did everything go? Because uh, obviously you're, you're uh, you know, a couple hours ahead of me. What time is it there right now? Uh, right now it is half four. Um, so I've just got back from my, my first session, which is it's North London. So it's a pretty pretty far place to go where I'm at. Um, so I've just got home from that. You know, I'm going to do a bit of food and chill out for a couple hours. And then uh, I'll do another session this evening. Well, uh, thanks for having me part of your pre-fight uh, dinner uh, this evening. I appreciate that. But uh, let's talk about your Pleasure, UFC mate. debut, man. What a performance I was getting that finish over Johnny Eduardo. Uh, how happy were you with your performance, especially getting a finish? Um, obviously, I was over the moon. You know, to get the finish and get a bonus as well, that was um, it was everything I've worked for. Uh, uh, I don't feel that it's a, it's a it's a dream come true. You know, I feel that it's what it's what deserved and it's what I expected. Um, you know, I took a few too many shots than I would have liked to in the fight. Um, obviously, the intentions are that we want to hit and not get hit. But that fight, you know, I did take a few. Um, but, you know, it's all a learning curve. I've got the win. So, you know, since that fight, I've come out, I've evolved, I've worked on the uh, the holes that I had in my game. And now I'm just looking forward to the next one. Yeah. And, and that fight was back in June. And here we are talking about a fight in December. Uh, were you looking to get in there a little bit sooner or, or you, did you want this much time off? Yeah. So I, after the fight, um, Johnny Eduardo actually re-broke my nose. It had been broken before and he kind of re-fractured it as such. Uh, so I think it was six weeks that I had to have out. Um so, you know, obviously I was forced to have six weeks out for that regardless. Um, and then, yeah, I just only wanted about a month off and, yeah, just been waiting for the fight. I thought the UFC would have given me something a little bit sooner. Um, but it just means that for the last, since June, the last five months, you know, I've been in training and, you know, I'm fit as a fiddle, mate. I'm ready to go. So, you know, it's kind of been a blessing in disguise, really. You know, it's like that saying, right? The, you know, good things come to those who wait. And uh, it certainly paid off for you because you're on this card and this is a stacked event. I mean, John Jones is returning. You've got the featherweight title fight. Like just, you know, how excited were you to, to find out you were on this card fighting in Vegas at the end of the year? M- amazing, mate. You know, obviously, I'm pretty gutted that I missed Christmas dinner. Um, I'm not happy about that. that I have to cut weight over Christmas and, you know, miss out on that. But it'll all be worth it, you know, to be on such a good card to come in. You know, and I'm obviously confident that I'm going to get the win and come home and celebrate with my friends and family. You know, it really is a dream come true. And then, you know, it's not uh, 11 weeks after there's that London card. So, you know, I want to put on a good performance for this one. And then, you know, you best bet that I'm going to be looking to get on that. And another disappointing factor of this fight is uh, you're supposed to fight Tom Duke and Juan. Now you're fighting Andre Uhl. Uh, you know, still a great opponent, but I'm sure part of you, you know, wished you could have still had that fight against Duke and Juan just because pretty notable matchup for the two of you, uh, you know, being international fighters. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit more gutted for everyone else, you know, because I know a lot of people have been asking that fight for a long time now. Um, he was obviously on the, the Bama, which is a UK promotion, um, when I was on there. So a lot of people were saying about me and him fighting three years ago. So for that fight to get announced and to see how excited everyone was, was about it, you know, that, that was a good feeling for me because I knew people would be tuning in. I still like to think that people are tuning in now for me against Andre Yul, but you know, if it's if it can't be Tom, then you know at least I've got a replacement. And and did you have to switch much in your camp for the new opponent, or are you one of those guys who just focuses more on what you're good at, what you bring to the table? No, I, as you say, I, I focus usually on myself because for this exact reason, you know, opponents pull out and things change. Um, luckily, obviously, Tom pulled out the first week of fight camp anyway, um, so I hadn't off trained really mm-hmm. too much for him in it anyway, and. Tom, he's one of those guys where he switches southpaw to orthodox. So I was training for, for southpaws as well. And, you know, Andre Ewell's come in and he's a southpaw. The only difference, I think, five foot 11. So I've tried to make sure my sparring's with uh, taller taller guys, which, you know, we've got at the gym. So honestly, I'm feeling great. And it, and it doesn't really affect me at all that the, the opponents change. The outcome's still going to be the same. How do you feel like you match up against him here? Because I think the theme with Ewell has just been, he's been the underdog a lot of times. Even when he won the CES title on the regional scene, he was not favored in that fight. He won the fight. That got him in the UFC. And then he fights Henan Barrow. And I think people felt like Barrow, former champion, was going to take him out. But that didn't happen either. How do you feel like you match up against him? I feel like I'm a tough matchup for him. I believe, you know, obviously he done, he done really well to, to defeat uh, Renan Barrow. But 
we all know that that Renan Barrow is not the same Renan Barrow that he used to be. You know, he's definitely, no disrespect to him, he's not the same fighter that he was two years ago. So, you know, don't get me wrong. I respect that Andre Yule's come in on short notice and, he, and he's got the win, which is great for him. I'm not Renan Barrow. You know, I've been training solidly. I've got the motivation. I'm young. I'm athletic. You know, this is what I'm striving to be the best at. So, you know, I think that that's going to play a big factor in it. I'm not a... Uh, you know, I'm not fired. It's been around and just trying to get a little paycheck. You know, I'm here and I'm here to stay. And uh, you talked a little bit about training camp there. What about training partners? Who are some of the guys that are helping you get ready for this fight? Uh, we've got some great guys down at Team Titan. We've got uh, Dominic Wooden, who's uh, similar to Andre. You know, he kind of has his hands down style. He's a southpaw. So he's been a great training partner for this camp. Um, we've got Ashley Grimshaw, who's on uh, who's signed with Bellator. He's got a big fight coming up. We got Nathan Grayson, who was the Cage Warriors uh, world champion. Mike Ekendeo, mate. We've got so many small, small guys in the UK that I really think that that gym is, uh, you know, it's kind of the um, team alpha male, but in the Europe scene. Okay, I like hearing that. That's great. Um, how about the weight cut? You mentioned having to skip Christmas. Uh, you know, obviously you can't have a lot of that really good holiday food. How's that going ahead of this matchup? Uh, weight cut's going fine. My diet, literally, as I say, because I've expected the UFC to give me something a little bit sooner, it's been on point for about four months now. Um, you know, I'm I'm where I want to be now, and obviously on fight week, I just have to do the dreaded uh, sauna and weight cut and whatnot. But as far as I'm as I'm as where I am now, it's it's perfect. Great. And uh, who's going to be in your corner for this fight? For my, in my corner is going to be my my dad, who's who's been in every corner since since the start. Um, I've also got Brad Pickett and Ashley Grimshaw as well. How do you see this fight playing out on December 29th? Um, I see myself getting a finish. I think uh, I believe in the first or second round I'm going to get a TKO, or I have a feeling I might get a submission. Um, you know, I'm going to put the pressure on him, and you know, even though he's more of a striker, he might be shooting for a takedown on this one. So it'll be interesting to see, but. You know, without a doubt, I'm going in there confident. And you already referenced it there. What next? What, what is next? I mean, if you come out unscathed, the plan is to get on that London card. Uh, do you have an opponent in mind after this? I know, not looking past Andre, but I'm sure you're a guy who's always looking ahead, uh, you know, to, what, to what's next and sort of the future. Um, I don't have any opponent as such that I'm, I'm looking for. Um, there's a few guys that would be quite nice to fight. One being obviously Tom Dukumar because, you know, the fight's obviously been, uh, cancelled now. So it kind of makes sense. Um, I would also like to fight Cheeto Vera. You know, he beat my, my, my coach, uh, Brad Pickett back that's in. That's right. That's right. Okay. So, yeah. You know, I want to avenge that loss. You know, I'm, I'm here to fight. So, you know, if he's game, then that'd definitely be a good one. Um, so yeah, just really whoever the UFC give me, but you know, I definitely every fight I want to be taking a step up. Uh, I mentioned your nickname off the top, the prospect, uh, does that nickname stay with you throughout the entire career? Or as you get a little bit older, you know, let's say you're getting towards a title. I think that name might have to change. Would you plan on doing that? Or are you going to keep the, the, the nickname as long as you can? It's hard, you know, I want to keep it for as long as I can because I've kind of built that up as my, uh, I don't know, it's like my little brand name now, you know, um, so, you know, until I become that, that champion, pound for pound, then maybe I might have to change the name. But for now, you know, I think I'm going to stick with it. Well, it's like Stephen Wonderboy Thompson's a prime example. I mean, he's in his mid-30s. I think to call him a Wonderboy at this yeah. point is probably a little outdated. But, but it sounds to me like you're open to change uh, if, if you had to do it. Yeah, once I've got that gold strap, then uh, I might be looking to uh, evolve the name a little bit. What's the story behind that name anyways? How did you get that? It was, my, my, me and my dad used to watch a show called Sons of Anarchy. Oh, know, it's a show, show that I'm yeah. sure everyone who's watching this should at least watch at, at some point it. in their lifetime. Great show, by the way. That's it. And, uh, you know, in, in the show, they had the prospects and, and it was like The Apprentices. And, and I thought, man, that, that sounds quite cool. And then uh, I had my first semi-pro fight coming up and it said, what's your nickname? And my dad put, he said, put down the prospect. And I liked it and, it and it stuck with me ever since, you know. So, yeah, you know, it's it's... it's yeah, I'd feel weird changing it. I agree. And that, that's a great story, too. I always love hearing like a good backstory behind a nickname instead of just like, oh, yeah, one day my coach called me this and that's that. Like, at least there's like a reference there to one of the greatest shows of all time in Sons of Anarchy. So I like that. Um, last question before we let you go. Uh, you know, we've talked all about your fight career and everything that's going on. Uh, what about downtime? Uh, what, what do you like doing to kind of take your mind off training and everything like that? Are you a video game guy? Are you watching any Netflix? What would I find you doing? 
Well, if I'm honest, I like eating. You know, I like eating a lot of food, which I can't do now. So <laughs> yeah, it's sucks. kind of a bummer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, mate, if I'm honest, I'm just a kind of I'm not I'm not a party goer. You know, I'm not this guy that goes out drinking. You know, I, I like the the the, the the simple things in life, you know, going to the cinema, going for a meal with my girlfriend or a couple of my friends. That's usually what I like doing. Um, you know, at the moment, because I can't eat and stuff, I've been playing a lot of Battlefield on the PlayStation. Okay, there you go. Uh, you know, I'm a little bit hooked on that at the moment, but, you know, at least it's uh, it's um, killing, it kills a bit of time. So No, that, that's smart. And you need that downtime. You need that buffer in between everything. So it's not just consuming you, uh, the fight game, as uh, as they say. Um, what about the airplane, you know, getting over to Vegas? What, what do you like doing on the airplane? Are you, I, I'm sure sleep is part of that, but, you know, are you listening to any podcasts? Are you bringing a book? What would I find you doing there? Yeah, I, I always bring a book on the plane. You know, I try and read as much as I can. When So for, even for now, when I go training, you know, I sit on the train for about three hours. So, you know, I try and read a lot and, you know, just learn something every day. Um, so I do that, you know, on the airplane. I'll probably, you know, get Netflix or something. Um, and other than that, mate, I'm just going to try and sleep as much as I can and rest up and, you know, get ready for this wake up. What's a good book that you've uh, read recently that you can recommend to my listeners? What's what's part of the Nathaniel Wood book club uh, this month? Oh, oh nice! Cool. Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. I mean that that's uh, that's a very famous book here in North America. Yeah, so. I'm reading that at the moment. I'm almost done, but so far it's been uh, it's been good. So you know, I'd recommend it. And I recommend people check out this card, man. UFC 232, December 29th. It is stacked. What a way to end the year. Uh, Nathaniel, it was great getting a chance to talk to you, man. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you have any sponsors or shout-outs, the floor is yours, man. You can uh, find me on at the Prospect MMA on my Twitter and Instagram. You know, that's what I, uh, I mainly use. So, yeah, if anyone fancies following me, you know, come on that. Um, also, I just want to give a big shout out to obviously my coaches and my friends and family, everyone that's been supporting me. I can't I can't name everyone individually because I'll forget someone and then I'll be in trouble. Always a big, uh, big thank you to my sponsors, the Arc Minute. You know, it's a clothing brand. They've been looking after me. Um, you know, I've got Red King sponsorship. Uh, Martin Barrett also, who's been who's been supporting me. And uh yeah, you know, there's there's plenty of names that I'm, I'm probably going to forget. So, you know, I won't say too many. Otherwise, I'll get I'll get in trouble. 